Amen, amen, amen. He amen. is holy. Can you hear me now? No. Mm -hmm. Lights are off. Can you hear me now? Yes. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so let's start off. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, as we can all tell, Pastor Larry and his beautiful wife Candy are on vacation this week, a much needed rest. So Candy, hi, I know you're watching. I saw you on Facebook. <laughs> okay. But I just want to say, Lord, thank you for our pastor and first lady. And thank you for this time of rest and that they would come back rested and God would give them a word for them as individuals and for our church. Amen. 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 So let's get started. I want to read Psalms 100 as we prepare our hearts to give. Okay. So it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is good. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. 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 So would you stand with me as we pray? child support would come, right? Right. But God is so good that I reached a point in my life that my tithe became the $120 every two weeks. When you take what he has and out of obedience you give back into the kingdom, can he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? So I stand here now and I tell you I never thought that that situation would rectify itself, but in the end, I started giving back, double back. My tithe doubled over the years because I was faithful in the little. He gave me the much. Yes, he did. That's true. So when I speak to you about the tithe, it is not about the needs of the church. It's about positioning you yep. for a blessing, Amen. for a breakthrough, for God to work in your life. This is the first of the month, and I'm hoping that I have said something that will make you rethink your giving practices. So... Amen. 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 With that said, I want Vicki to come up because she's going to share some information about the um, emergency preparedness class that she's going to have on October the 14th. Good morning, you all. Okay, we are going to have an emergency preparedness class, and the reason that we are going to have this is because in an emergency situation, such as the grid going down like it did in Texas, like they had the train with all the chemical spill in East Palestine, we need to be prepared for anything. And I don't want any one of you 
to God. I want you to make it. That's my goal. So we know that acting with wisdom does not indicate a lack of trust in God. So therefore, being prepared is acting in wisdom. See, um, I have two questions for you. And if you cannot look, know the answer to these two questions without looking on your phone through the internet, then you need the class. Okay? First question. But it's a rule of three for survival. Second question. What are three types of water in a survival situation? And to what degree should that water be filtered to be considered safe? If you don't know the answer, be there Saturday the 14th at 6.30. It is very important. It's not a joke. We are, although I will joke around, and there will be goodies to give away, and there will be items for emergency that will be on sale. And all sale does not go to me. It goes to Willow Praise Church. Amen. So it's a fundraiser and a lesson all in one. I will see you Saturday the 14th. Okay, at 6 30. Amen. Yes. And with that said, this Saturday, the 7th, we are having a worship night, Gary Sanders Jr. This will be at um, 6 p.m. In Habit will be the performance that night. I pray that you come. The worship is so key to the believer. Praise and worship, okay? Hello? Amen. 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 Okay. So let's go forward. So this week we have a couple of things going on. Also on the Sabbath, they're having Band of Brothers. They have a breakfast fellowship with the men. And it's at 7, 8 a.m. in the morning. So I'm hoping that you can come. And during the week, we have our normal um, Bible studies. But this week on Wednesday, I wanted to let you know that um, we're having a guest speaker, Nico and Albina. They'll be here at 6.30. So I'm praying that you make it, okay? So they are dynamite speakers. I enjoy every year they come. And for those that are new to our church, come and experience this man and woman of God. Okay, so it's 6.30. I said 7, but I noticed on Facebook they changed the time. So it is at 6.30. I will be here. I'll be looking for you. Amen. Okay. So you pretty much know what's happening all this week. Um, you do have a copy of the bulletin. And Pastor will be back next Sunday. But with that said, I want to introduce to you our pastor, Murdis Randall Walker, who will be speaking today in his, in his absence. So let's give her a hand of applause as she comes forth to do the work. Amen. Good morning, little friends. First of all, let's stand and give a, a praise to God and a prayer. I want somebody, I want everybody to join hands with somebody. Because, you know, when we stand in the gap for each other, when two or more are together praising and worship, the Holy Spirit can bring us down and be upon this place. Mm. Heavenly Father, as we humbly but also boldly approach your throne, Father God, asking you, Lord Jesus, to, to just come down and be in this space, in this place. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask for just uh, the love of light, Father God, the love of life, Father God. We thank you for the death, burial, and the resurrection, and the ascension, Father God, for whispering into my Father's ear so that I can have eternity with you, Father God, and I can have salvation and forgiveness for the things that I've done. We thank you for what happened on Calvary. We thank you for the love that you give us each and every single day. We thank you for awakening us this day, Father God. We say, Father God, we say the trials that we've gone through, Father God, you say, you would you know, would you take us to you, bring us through, Lord Jesus. Father God, just let us know that the trials come to make us stronger, to make us for more perfection than you, Lord Jesus. Let us know that you love us, Father God. Let us know that love is the greatest gift of all, Lord Jesus. Let us have a heart of repentance and forgiveness, Lord Jesus. Let us know that, that we can be a beacon on the hill, Father God. Let our, let our little light shine, that, that we can touch one another and stand in the gap for one another and pray for one another and be kind to one another. Oh, Holy Spirit, rain down, Holy Spirit, rain down, Holy Spirit, be upon this place. Let our voice be used, Father God. Let the love of our heart shine upon this place, Lord Jesus. Let us care for one another, for Father God. Let us use due care of one another, Lord Jesus. Let us know that, Father God, you are there and always be there, like footprints of the skin, even when we can't see us 
feet, Father God. You would be our carings, Lord Jesus. Father God, be our high tower in times of trouble, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, just continue to block us from our enemy, Father God. Just continue to be, be the cloak. Just touching up the cloak brings rains down with miracles and blessings and gifts. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we have together. Share your word and your love, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for those who are here and want to be here. Our Facebook family, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for just caring for us enough to come upon this place and this space for waking us this morning, Father God. We thank you for the for giving your only begotten Son that we may have eternal life, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, with a heart of thanksgiving and praise. Father God, we pray for one another with love and grace and mercy, compassion, oh, and kindness. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Christ Jesus' name, may we love one another until his return. May we walk in his ways. May we see his face. Oh, cover us with the blood of Jesus. We say amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today our text is going to be out of the book of James. But before we go to the text of the book of James, I want us to do something. Because there's power in the tongue. There's power in the words we speak, good, bad. But when we speak it, we put it in an atmosphere. And this is a kid's song, so all of us should know it. I just want us to sing it a cappella. Lift your voice and sing. You everybody know, yes, Jesus loves me? Oh, yeah. yes. Can we sing that together a cappella? I think the words are delivered, though. Are we ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. He just loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. Amen. How many of you all know that? The answer to God's promises are yes and amen. Uh huh. How many of y'all know that? Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. You with me up here? <laughs> because He is not a man, so He shall not lie. Yeah, come on. So if He yeah. promises you something. Guess what? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna pass. So we're gonna come out of the, the text of, of James, chapter one, verses one through twelve. I'm gonna read it to you only because of. Uh, I don't know if all of you, I don't know if you put it up there or not, but she did. So I'm going to read it to you. So we'll, we'll hide the text. Uh, chapter 1. James, a servant of God and one of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet the trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, mm -hmm. that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, yes. and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubt. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person may not be supposed, not supposed that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltations and the rich in his humiliations, humiliations, because like a flower of grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flowers fall, its beauty perishes. So all with riches may fade away in the midst of this pursuit. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trials when he is persecuted. Can we say amen to the blessing of the word? Amen. 
Amen. The title of the sermon is The Battle Between What We Want and What Our Faith Wants. Because the reason why I really picked this title, some of you know and some of you don't know. I've been having my own little battles. All of us have been having our own little battles. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, the Bible was written back then. It really ain't relevant right now. Mm. But let me tell you a little bit about James and when this was written, okay? All of you know that this was written, James at this time, this letter was written to the Jewish Christians. Many of them who had been scattered about Jerusalem, they had been separated from Jerusalem, they were persecuted. Uh, they were the Israel that were composed of 12 tribes, most of you know that. The family lines descended from the son of Jacob, from whom God renamed Israel. As the leader in Jerusalem, the church, James was well known to the leaders and the believers, especially since they may originally have been part of the church of Jerusalem. But at that time, Stephen had been martyred. Okay, Saul, who turned to Paul, had been, he was on the uprise. So guess what he was doing? He was killing everybody that claimed to be Christians or believed in Jesus. So now let me tell you what's going on now. So there was so I'm just saying, back then there was political adversity, massive killings, divided country, people hating on one another because they were different. Let's talk about today's world. COVID, pandemic, massive killings, guns on an uprise, people shooting. It's just unheard of of all the murders in, in kids' schools nowadays. You never heard of that. And, 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 and now that's all you hear about. You hear about people not liking you because you, you're a different color or not liking you because, because you believe in a different faith. So tell me, is there any difference between then and now? No, ma'am. No, sir. There is no difference. So I'm going to tell you that this word is relevant Today, as it was yesterday, the word stands true in all times. So, in, in verse one, he's telling verse two. He's actually telling you that the word trials count it all as joy. What does he mean, count it all as joy? He means that put your strength and, and faith in Christ. He means that. What it looks like is not what it actually is. The persecutions don't come because you've done something bad or because you have sinned or because God is angry with you. The persecutions sometimes come because he wants to test your faith in him. Yeah. Look at what happened to Job. Yeah. But he never renounced God, did he? How many times when we have a trial in our lives, we begin to seek other things other than God? We begin to look to your sister, your mother, your friend, and your pastor. And I said, none of these things are wrong. But where should the word and your faith first come from? It should come from God. You should be on your knees in your quiet space seeking his answer, seeking what he wants you to do. Because the, the trial comes to make you stronger. Right. And what he takes you to, he will bring you through. Can amen. I get an amen? Amen. 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 Yes. For all y'all doubters and naysayers, because you know, the first thing when people get a persecution or they get sick or an illness in their body, I heard people say, oh girl, you ain't praying strong enough. Hmm. Uh. I said, okay. That's your opinion. But what I'm going to lay myself in is the word of God. God told me that this persecution is that he's taking me stronger. He's making me an example. He's going to make me, ooh, closer than you. And when I come out of this trial, I'm on a new level. So remember, as you walk through your trials, when you ain't got no food on your table, when you when you, when you, when you question it, Why is this happening to me? Remember, 
God had a plan for you to prosper you and not to harm you and a hope for your future. Yes. Lean on to his promises and not your own understanding. Know that God loves you through all things. He will always be there like the footprints in the sand carrying you when you can't even walk. Mm. Remember, when he says that we sometimes do the woe is me thing. And I'm thinking about uh, the lowly brother in, in chapter 1. Through, let me read it to you again. Let the lowly brother boast in his exhortations and the rich in his humiliations because it's like a flower of the grass and he will pass away. Hmm. God ain't saying that you ain't supposed to be have good things and, and wonderful things. But what he's saying is that when you sit around and you have, I'm gonna speak about me. Look at in my closet. I have a closet full of clothes. My kids will tell you, clothes all over the house. Mm -hmm. And you look in there and say, I ain't got nothing to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we can be a little bit ungrateful. Mm -hmm. Because God is suffice. Because what we have, sometimes we don't even realize. We don't even, we don't even value it. Right. We be like, oh, I ain't got this. And you look in your refrigerator, I ain't got no food. Mm -hmm. Freezer full of food. But what you need to be saying, it ain't what I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Amen. we sit there and we say, God, why I got to go through this? And God said to you, baby, I'm building, call you baby because you're your daddy. Baby, I'm building something in you. I'm transforming things for you. But you say, it ain't what I want. I want things easy. I want things smooth. I don't want to go through no trials. I don't want to go through no tribulations. But without trials and tribulations, how you going to grow? How you going to get to the next level? Right. We learn through osmosis. Y'all you know what that is? <laughs> Trial and error. We learn through doing. Mm -hmm. But we get faith through the hearing of his word. So not only do you have to do his word, read it yourself, but you have to do what? Do his word. Sometimes God wants to see what your character's like. Mm -hmm. He wants to see what you really about, mm -hmm. what you really gonna turn to when times get hard. For example, your gas just got turned off. I'm just giving y'all some real life situations. Mm -hmm. Who you turning to? What you doing? Are you hitting the lottery up? Are you hitting, what do they call it, the Department of Ohio liquor, the liquor store, because you're depressed? Are you buying drugs and alcohol, or are you seeking out things that you have chemical dependencies because of the fact that uh, you ain't relying on him? You start doing that, woe is me, I need something to help me. I just use those as examples, but there's other examples, school, friends, gossip. What he wants you to do is turn to him. Go to him. Talk to him. Be with him. He'll give you all the answers. But sometimes y'all wonder why y'all keep going around like a little permit on a, on a like what they call a little, little, little animal on, on a spinning wheel. Why you keep going around and around and around? Keep going through the same situations. You know why you go through the same situations? You keep doing the same thing and act just looking for different results. You got to rely on him. You keep, you keep, you know how you do what you do sometimes? You give the God immediately. You know your knees and you and you and you and you stand past heartily and you pray and you ask God, Jesus, 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 intervene, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But what do you say? A half-hearted man will receive what? Say it with me. Nothing. Nothing. Because your faith ain't real. You switch. 
switch back and forth. You believe in him sometimes, and then, some, and then you take it back and want to do it yourself. Mm. A double-minded man. Double-minded in all his ways. Right. Mm. If you're double-minded in one way, you're double-minded in what? No, all his ways. ways. Mm. So how are you going to be blessed? If you're sitting there saying, okay, God, I'm going to give it to you one minute, and the next minute, I'm going to go ask my sister her advice, and then I might follow her advice a little bit. And her advice didn't work, so God, I'm going to give it back to you again. And then I'm going to go back and ask my cousin this time, because he gave good advice next time. Okay, no, 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 that, that didn't work. So this time, I'm going to ask the psychic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. huh. But you want to be what again? I'm going to say, I say this all the time for those of you who don't know, and have some of you heard of the bill too, you may pass the test, but you won't be blessed. Mm -hmm. When you try to do things on your own strength and your own internal draw, you can't be used. Because you're double-minded. You're trying to live the world, and you're trying to live God. You're trying to live the world, you're trying to live God. You're trying to live the world, you're trying to live God. He said, lukewarm is like foul in his throat. Like throat. That's what it means. Yeah. Okay? Is that what you want to be? Is it? I would say make a choice. Make a choice. But I'm a, I'm a firm believer that God gives you freedom of choice. So I ain't going to judge you. Judge you not. You be judged. I ain't judging nobody. What God say do, you need to do. If God ain't speaking to you that way, then don't do it. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay trying to stay trying to stick to my text. I got a little sidetrack. Okay. Anyway. Okay. We need to understand that there's a couple things that God wants us to do, regardless of our situations. He wants us to count and ask. And we have two things to, things to be, tested and blessed. What does count and ask mean? In chapter 2, it says, count it all, all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials and barriers. Mm -hmm. What he's saying in here is that count it all this joy. It may not feel good, but he said the sun comes in the morning. After the trial, you feel blessed and you see the blessing. The primary obstacle to our holiness is our mind. The battle is where? In, the mind. in our mind. So when we count it all this joy, instead of we grumble on Facebook or Instagram or with our friends or whatever, our test doesn't seem to produce growth. Instead, they typically produce a groaning and complaining. And it minimizes our maturity. Because we start complaining, we start, we start looking at other things, we start taking our eyes off the prize, and we don't mature that way, because we stay in the same place. We stay right where we were. Because you're getting all these different answers from all these different people. How are you going to hear God? You hear too many voices. We need to change our thinking. We need to stop thinking trials as troubles. Trials are tests that can be passed and you've got to know that God always, what he brings you to, he brings you through. Mm -hmm. Our souls wants to make us happy, wants to make us happy. The other wants to make you, make you whole. See, we fight within ourselves. And sometimes we're the tribe. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Sometimes you're the tribe. Sometimes you sit there and you say, well, hmm, I don't know. I know what this person is doing wrong. I know they're doing wrong. I know that, 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 that the lifestyle that, 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 that I'm living ain't right. I know that, 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 that I'm associating with things that, that I shouldn't be doing. I know this. Because we want to live by what? Flesh. Our flesh. Mm. We want to live by our flesh. But instead, we're supposed to be living how? By the Spirit. By the Spirit and by faith and by the Word. Mm -hmm. But we take it, and you know what that causes? A dichotomy within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the trial is not 
when we think about whatever was easy for us to think about is our struggles, our gas, our light, our food, our money, our cars, our children, our homes, our jobs. Those are easy trials to focus on, aren't they? But you know what the hardest trial to focus on is? Here. This is the hardest trial to focus on. The hardest trial to focus on is how you feel about yourself. How you feel about what's in you. How you feel about the life you live. Mm -hmm. What you should do, what you shouldn't do, how you should do, how you shouldn't do. But I'm going to rely you back to the word. Remember, Saul walked with a thorn, and he said what? His grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't think like that. When we get a little thorn, we don't want to say, but your grace is sufficient. We want to say, how can I get rid of this thorn? I think Paul asked three times to have that thorn removed. Yeah. But we be asking continuously, but the thorn sometimes not going to be removed until what? We pass the test, what? Of faith. Of faith. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that these trials come to take us to a new level of growth. Until we grow to a new level of faith and belief, you're going to be right there in the same place. You'll be right there wondering, what is going on in my life? Why am I having these same trials over and over and over again? Because you're not passing the test. You're relying on everything else with who? Jesus. Until we learn that the Holy Spirit has to encapsulate your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and everything, and that we rely only on him, that we're on those knees and that we're praying, we're asking, we're seeking. It's never going to happen. We're too busy out there seeking other things instead of seeking him. Because we want to be satisfied in the flesh. God is, the Lord is in control. Your trials won't go beyond the boundaries that he set. I want you to remember that. They will never go beyond the boundaries that he set for you. They may seem like they're pushing the boundaries further and further, but never will they go beyond the boundaries that he set for you. He has a specific purpose for your son. You say, really? Yes, he does. The hardship will prove to be profitable if you submit in God, in Jesus, and trust him through the process. Try situations or opportunities for faith to prove genuine and grow stronger. Remember what I said? What don't kill you, what? Will make you stronger. stronger. Because God will make you grow in him. And through those struggles. Those struggles will stretch you to places, and sometimes he puts those persecutions to bring you closer to him. He wants you to seek him and seek his face. He wants you to understand that God will walk with you through all your difficulties. And also he's building Christ-like character in you. When, you. when you endure suffering with unexplainable peace and joy, God will discriminate, demonstrate his sustainability and powers to others. So sometimes as you walk through your trial, others are watching you walk. And how you walk through that trial can bring a person closer to Christ or push a person further away. Because others say, wow, where did she get that strength from? Oh, wow, look how she's walking through that. And they want to know, where did you get that from? Who gave you that? And that's your opportunity to do what? Go about the world and make what? Great disciples. That's your opportunity to preach to somebody. Because we all are responsible for making disciples. Mm -hmm. yes. Not just the person standing up here giving the word, but we all are responsible. Because that's one of the great commandments he gave us. Go about the world and make yourself great disciples. But you're only going to be able to make great disciples through what? Love, compassion, and kindness. So when you're walking through your trials, remember, you need to have what? Love, compassion, and kindness. You need to show, just because you're ill or you're not feeling good, or, you, or, your, or your life just got turned off, or you just got divorced, or you just heard some horrible news, or just lost your job, should you be walking around like, like you know, oh, the boy is me, I'm so sorry. I... No. You should, be, you should be joy. 
We be counted all as joy because God has a plan to prosper you and not to harm you and has a hope for your future. That is not a, a trial, it's a temporary situation. It is not permanent. Eternity is permanent. Mm -hmm. It is not permanent. It's just something that you're going through because joy comes in the morning. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Just remember that. It is not something that you should lay in and wallow and lie in. Oh my goodness. I, I, I go to. I go to the clinic, and I got people who just enjoy and revel in being sick. Mm -hmm. Revel, I'm serious. They be telling you how sick they are. I mean, how many times they have been through it? How many, how many, how many drugs they own? And, and, and they, all they want to tell you about it. I mean, like, okay, well, what good happened to you? You here. <laughs> you sitting next to me. We walking and talking together. But all you want to talk about is how sick you are, how bad you feel. Why don't you talk about you up walking? Why don't you talk about you got a voice to speak? Why don't you talk about you had some good food today? Why don't you talk about you know you got a home to go to? Why don't you talk about somebody's picking you up, taking you to and fro? Why don't you talk about the good things? But all you talk about is the bad. So sometimes change the way we thinking. The glass ain't half empty; it's half full. And when you remember the positives. Because everything has a positive to it, whether it be negative in your mind or positive in the next person's mind. But it's up to you to choose which side you're going to take. Because God is building character. No matter what you want to say, he's going to build character in you, your way or his way. So your minds will give in. There is a war within between what we want and what our faith wants. That's why James said, let it do its work. Let it, let it do its work. God's desire is not to make us happy, but to make us holy. And oh, by the way, holy people are usually happier people because faith is always fruitful. Faith is always fruitful. When you see people walk around, they be all happy, hey, how you doing? I always smell like, what's wrong with them? They, got, they know Jesus. They know Jesus. Don't be mad because they, they take the time to make Jesus their friend and you ain't. Okay? That's what's wrong with them. They just know Jesus. You sitting up there trying to figure out, should I trust my friend? Should I trust my mother? Should I trust my job? Should I trust everybody else? Instead of Jesus. Don't be mad. Because I've got a relationship with him. Because I'm going to smile. I'm going to laugh. And you know what else, people? We sit there and worry about, we put too much emphasis on what people think about us. But you don't want to put the same emphasis on what does Jesus think about you. You're too much worried about, oh, so-and-so ain't going to like me. Does Jesus like you? The man that was sinless died on Calvary as a sacrifice so that last atonement, no other blood ever has to be shed, innocent, up there whispering and interceding on the right hand of my father with my sinful butt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm worried about what my sister thought. Like. <laughs> okay? I'm we a little confused, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> But we got to put our perspective in the right vision. God wants us to be happy. He wants us to have joy. But he also wants us to have the trials. Get over yourselves. Walk through them. And love him. I'm going to read something to you. This ain't mine. No? And I'm sorry, I, I went way off text, but sometimes that happens. <laughs> and this is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. We simply have to trust our Heavenly Father to know best. We have to trust God's silence and wait for God's answers. When we pray for healing of a loved one, or he lies, or she dies, 
when we pray for release from our financial burdens, or things just seem to get worse, when we pray for reconciliation and we're handed divorce papers, when we pray for our career and we get laid off, when we pray for our protection and we're robbed, trust him. Psalm 37 5 says, Commit your ways to the Lord, trust him. Trust also in him, and he shall bring, to, bring it to pass. God answers prayer in his time, in his way, so that our faith rests totally in him. Then when the answer comes, we will know without a shadow of doubt that it comes from him alone. So commit your ways to him and trust him. Amen. Amen. So when you go through your trials and your tribulations, know that your answer may not come immediately. Know that your answer may not come in your time. Sometimes when we're praying for a loved one, it may not be within God's will. So sometimes we want things because that's what our flesh wants. But it may not be the will of God. So when we pray, we should always say, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that we are not out of God's will. Because we're good for, including myself, praying in that flesh tone. Because we are men. We have feelings. But God feels our feelings too. That's right. So remember, God loves you. He has a plan and a purpose and a design for your life. He knew what you would be, what you wouldn't be, when he needed you together in your mother's womb. He knew the trials. He sees you. He loves you. He cares for you. And can we sing this one more time before we go into communion? Just a chorus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. 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 Now we're about to take communion. We have we serve an open communion. For those who wish, I'm gonna try to open this back again. Hold on. Never take yourself too seriously. For those who do who don't have one, raise your hand and um, they'll come, they'll give one to you. He's coming. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> That's my son. That's okay. <laughs> They're hard to open. So just mm. Mm. as we take these elements and sacraments and. We say, well, they're just crackers and little grape juice. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> oh, but it does. The representation of what this means. And I want to walk you through what this broken bread means. We all know about the Last Supper when Jesus was sitting there, he broke the bread and passed it on and everybody said, take this. But let me tell you what it really means, this broken bread. Break the bread and pass it. Jesus was broken. After he was beaten and broken. <clears throat> beaten to the point that he was unrecognizable. A thorn of thistles placed on his head. He knew this was coming. He knew. He knew who was betraying him. He knew. But yet still, he walked through his trial without question. Because he knew that there was something greater coming. He knew his purpose. He knew and understood God's love for the man. He knew. He knew. So when you break this piece of bread, the representation of the person who was an innocent person, beaten, scorned, killed, so that I could have freedoms to worship and praise him. Think about that. Let your heart just take a moment to think about what he did on Calvary just for you. Think about, we have a relationship with God because this happened. We ain't got no kill, no goat, no sheep, no first cow. 
out. Blood has already been shed for you. Think about it. Think about the beating. Think about the, the every time you, you do something, every time you have a trial that you walk through and, 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 you, and you're not trusting in him. Think about it. Think about it. Think about the pain. Not the pain you're going through, but the pain. Think about it. Cleanse your heart. Put your heart and your mind together in the right place. And the right place is focused on Jesus. Go to him with repentance. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you just look at our hearts and repent for anything that is not of you, anything that is not what you want us to be, Father God. Forgive us for we have sinned, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Take us, Father God. Take us into your ways and lead us on your, on your path that you set out for us. Make us work and walk the path. Let us walk our trials with, with humiliation and, and with, with expectation so that we can, be, we can pass the test and be blessed, Lord Jesus. In Christ Jesus' name, Father God, cleanse us. Woo! Let us remember you as we take this bread together. Let's take the bread and say amen. And it's grape juice. Think about all the blood. How many days he shed blood? He was beat on the path. He's beat. Blood drip. Days, days, blood shed. You, me, us. Sometimes it be. Hmm. All for me. Because he loved me. And he wanted me to have a relationship. He wanted to be with me for eternity. Salvation. And all you have to do is say, I believe and I accept with my heart and with my mind and with my mouth. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And all that he's done. His blood, this representation of his blood, becomes for us. Thank you, Jesus. Let's say thank you, Jesus. And let's say amen. Let's drink together. Let's sing together. What can make me white? That's out of words. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the throne that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Until we meet again, may you be blessed in your tombs and your throne. May you continue to be a beacon on the hill. May you go about the world and make great disciples. May you remember that Jesus loves you, that he gave his only his, all his life for you to have eternity. Just remember as you go, until we meet again, go about the world and make great disciples. Amen. Amen. Bye, Facebook. Bye. Thank you.